Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tinkering with Tiny Humans. We have my tiny human over here, Jacob, and he's got a sister, Elena, but this project is just gonna be with Jake today. We are going to uh, look into building a launch controller for model rockets. Jake is in Cub Scouts, and we are going to do some model rocketing this weekend, or rocketry this weekend. And uh, we decided that we could buy the launch controller or it could make one, and making one is always more fun. So we did some experimenting earlier today with some spare parts. Jake learned about the difference between series and parallel connections. So I gave him a challenge. I wanted him to wire up battery, push button switch, toggle switch and key switch so that all those things had to be connected at the same time in order for the launch to happen. And the way that we tested it, we weren't using a rocket, we used a multimeter. And when the multimeter would beep at us, yep, yeah, there you go. When the multimeter would beep at us, we know that we have a continuous circuit. So Jake built this circuit and we know that inside the multimeter, we have a battery and a speaker and he connected one wire of the push button uh, to the meter, the other wire of the push button to the switch, the other wire of the switch to the key switch, and the other side of the key switch back to the meter. And in that configuration, you had to have all of those on at the same time in order for it to launch. Now, I gave him another challenge, and that was, what would you do differently in order to make it so that any of those devices could make the, uh, make the rocket launch? So we did some experimenting, and he found out that if you stick the push button switch and the toggle switch and the key switch in parallel, which means that they all share a common connection, then any of these could be used to initiate the launch. But for safety's sake, we're gonna make it in a series connection so that we have to have all these things enabled in order for it to launch. So we decided to use this toolbox right here uh, because a waterproof uh, enclosure from Carlon that's eight by eight by eight is, you know, 30 bucks. And this thing was $5 from Home Despot. So this is a pretty decent solution for our needs. And we've already mounted the devices. We've got a push button momentary switch that will uh, say start the engine. We have a safety toggle switch that has to be raised and then clicked over that position. And then we have a tubular key switch that requires a key and it's momentary. So you must press down the key and rotate it. And when you let go, it springs back into the off position. So someone is gonna have to rotate this key and simultaneously press this button while it is armed in order for a launch to take place. So in today's video, we're gonna show how we're gonna make those connections. And uh, we're gonna do a test afterward with some fireworks to see if it works. All right, now one thing I did not discuss with you, Jake, is there's some terminals on this key switch. We could solder directly to them. But for the sake of convenience, we're gonna use these push-on lugs and we're going to crimp them onto the cable and add a little bit of solder. So those click on there, those click on there, and we'll just pretend that the switch is there when we're making our connections and then when we're all done, we'll plug them into place. One last piece that we didn't discuss, this uh, coaxial connector, this is a power connector or barrel plug connector. We're gonna make a drill hole on the side of the box and this is gonna stick out and this is how we can connect and disconnect our wires that go to the launch pad. Uh, that way we don't have a giant coil of wire hanging out of the side of the box. We can just plug this in when we're ready to use it and disconnect it when we're ready to store it. So I am going to go get the right size drill bit for this. And Jake, if you could start um, taking these wires and wiring them up in the same way as your picture showed, which is a series connection. And instead of the meter, the meter, you're just gonna save those wires uh, for connection to this. This is gonna be like our, our meter. And here's some wire for you to use, right there. And here's a wire stripper. You'll want to use the one that says 18 on it. That means 18 gauge. Would you just strip the wires? Yeah, so just pick a color. Right now we're not gonna worry about polarity because for this circuit, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're creating a resistive element, which is the igniter, and it doesn't care about polarity. It doesn't care what's positive and what's negative. Wait, didn't we already strip I did one of them, but you can do a cleaner connection if you want to start from scratch. So I'm going to get the right size drill bit for this, and I will be right back while you're working. Wait, these are already stripped. You could either use that end or you could strip them clean. If you think they're nice, then just twist them and uh, you can use them. Thank you. 
In your illustration, I'm going to start making the connections the way that you have the picture showing, and uh, then we can practice soldering together. And I'm gonna get some heat shrink tubing as well. All right, we're going to crimp this lug onto here, and then we're gonna add a little bit of solder to it. Uh, those weren't the ones that I twisted, I, I used these. I know, we can use those, but I'm just gonna have you do the crimping. So I folded the wire over because this connector is a little too large for the wire that we're using, but that's okay. Can you give these handles a squeeze, please? Slowly. Yep, go ahead. One more. Good. And anytime you make a connection like this, give it a tug and make sure it can't come out. Good. Excellent. So that's a pretty good connection. And we might add some solder. All right. On this wire, Jake, yep. look. So there's plastic over the metal parts of the wire. The plastic is called insulation on the individual conductors, and it's called jacket on the whole cable assembly. So this brown stuff is the jacket, but there's also insulation on the metal conductors. What do you think the insulation is for? Mm, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Do you remember using the multimeter and testing it to make, make a beeping sound? That's yeah. called continuity. Mm -hmm. When you touch the two metal pieces together, what happened? It made a beeping sound. It, it, it made a beeping uh, sound. Connected the electrical current. That's right. So it made a complete circuit when you touched the metal together. What if these metal wires were next to each other, but there wasn't any plastic on them? Hmm. If there wasn't any plastic on each other, they would uh, connect the electrical circuit. With that's the, uh, that's right. It would be a short circuit everywhere. So there would be no way to keep the wire separated. So the insulation is what protects against that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this jacket off because we have way too much in here. And it's just super long. All right. So we got that there. All right, can you give this a chop right about here? With this? Yep. Okay. 18? No, the cutters are right there at the very bottom. Good, all right. And then can you strip both of these Which about a half inch off using the 18? 18. You'll have to do them one at a time. I don't think that would. You could try 20, those are a little thinner. I'm, these might be 22 gauge wire. This is 20. Okay, here you go, try this. This one's already set for it. Make sure it's, watch this. So the wire, if you hold the cutters at an angle like this, it digs into the conductor and it doesn't take the insulation off. You wanna make sure this is perpendicular to the wire and watch, mm -hmm. comes off nice and easy. Good. Hi, Elena. Hi. Come say hi. No, they've never seen you before. That's okay, yeah, come, come over here. Hi. Hey guys, this is my other tiny human, Elena. We're gonna be doing some projects this summer with her as well. And um, Jake and Lainey are great kids. Sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't, but they're a lot of fun. Most of the time we do not. I guess that's true. All right, go get your stuff and we're gonna finish our video. Okay. All right, we have another thing to crimp, Jake. Crimping techniques. Not really techniques. You just put the crimping tool on and- Give it a smush. You squeeze. That was super wimpy. We gotta exactly. do a little bit more. I think what happened was it moved on you when you went to crimp it. So we'll add a little solder as well. Okay. Alrighty. What we're gonna do for power is we're gonna use a Power Wheels battery. And that's something that we can recharge. Is that 
It is. But oh, boy, she's going to be angry. No, she won't. We'll Ow. take it out and put it back. And this connector is what the power wheels uses, so we're going to use that okay. as part of our circuit. And we're going to attach one end of this to our barrel connector. Okay, we need to do a test. Okay, I do not know what terminal goes to where on this connector, so we're going to use our multimeter to test it. So what we'll do is we're going to attach one of these alligator clips to one terminal here, and that is the center position. And then we're going to plug this in, and we're going to figure out which one coincides with the center. All right, so it's this one. So I'll bend that out so I know that this is one we're using. And then we'll connect this to the other wire, and we'll test to see which one it coincides with. We know it's this one. Good. That means those are the two we have to make our connections to. Mm, yeah. All right, so power wheels connector to one end. All right, so the problem here is this is really tightly twisted. Or it's not tightly twisted enough. We have to get it really tightly yeah, twisted. Yeah, sorry. I didn't use a tool. It's not your fault. I used my fingers. This is heat shrink tubing. We'll use it at the end. When you apply heat to it, it gets smaller and it provides insulation. Hence the name, heat shrinking. Yep. Did we use this with the treehouse? Maybe. This type is, it shrinks to half its original size. There's ones that will shrink to one third of its original size. And I think that might be what I need because this is really awful tight. We'll put it on the other wire and that'll prevent a short circuit. I just changed my mind a little bit because this connector is gonna go on this side of the box. So I want this wire going to the key switch to connect to it. So we'll put our heat shrink over it. We'll bring our connector over here. And then the final connection is gonna be between this one and this one. And even though it's gonna be a tight fit, I don't have any thicker stuff. All right, let's double check our work before we start soldering stuff up. All right, let's see if we have a complete circuit. I'm just gonna put these very lightly onto here just so you can picture it. All right, so let's, let's follow the power. On this end right here, is our battery. We're not gonna make the connection yet. So it goes from our battery over into the push button switch, and then from the other side of the push button switch into the toggle switch, from one side of the toggle switch to the key switch, from the other side of the key switch to our launch wire, and from the other side of the battery to our launch wire. So I think we have some good connections here. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make all of our connections with a solder connection, that way they won't come loose. So solder is just melting a different type of metal than what we're joining. If we were using the same kind of metal as what we're joining, it would be welding, but welding uses a lot more heat, and soldering is what we use for electrical components. I'm just gonna trim this down to a little shorter length, and then I'll show you how to solder. All right, so check it out. Focus, please. This is called rosin core solder. So one thing we do is we wanna keep our tip clean, and this is brass wool, so that cleans our tip off. And in order to make the solder flow, the heat flow better to our part, we wanna tin the soldering iron, which means we add a little bit of solder to the tip of it first. So you see how it melts very quickly and it's shiny? Ew, shiny. Yep, shiny. And smoky. Uh, a little bit. All right, for the first one, you can do the holding and I will do the soldering. So just hold this with these crimpers very lightly. In fact, here, there's some needle nose. Okay. All right, hold that there. Good. Now here's the trick about, one of the tricks about soldering. You want the heat to go onto the part, not onto the solder. So if we apply the heat directly to the solder, it doesn't make a good connection on the metal. So what we want to do is heat up the metal, and then when the metal's hot enough, we'll add a little bit of solder to it, and it should flow into the joint. When the solder dries, or when it hardens, 
it should still be kind of shiny. If it's dull in color, that means that it's a bad connection. So here it's still shiny, so that was a good connection. Sometimes you can lick your fingers and touch it to cool it down a little bit faster. All right, let's do the other one. These ones are very fat, so I'm gonna do those and you can do the other connections. Can you hold this for me? Okay, how's those look? Good? Good. Okay. All right, so I'll have you solder these two pieces of wire together. You are left-handed, so most people would hold the soldering iron with their left hand and the soldering with their right, but you I can do whatever you want. I else with my right hand, That's but fine. I guess I'll... You try whatever's most comfortable hand. for you. I'll do it with my left hand. Okay. So I'll hold the wire for you. Now you want to hold the soldering iron underneath the wire. Just like this. Let's add a little solder. Uh, I'll show you how I would do it. So with my right hand, I would hold the soldering iron like a pencil. I would put the iron underneath. I would heat up the wire and then I would touch the solder until the wire started to melt. Almost. See how it's melting at the top? So you finish the joint. Hold the soldering iron underneath. Yep, and then use it underneath, and then use this hand to apply a little of the solder. Iron underneath, good. Good, yeah, hold it right there and keep it there. Keep it there, you're okay. so close. My hands are very jiggly. Oh, perfect. All right, now let go. Oh, so what does that do? It made this into one connection. There's like a little piece sticking out there. All right, so let's check our work. Remember, we want it to be shiny when it's all hardened, mm -hmm. which it is. That's good. Yes. And we see that there is solder all the way through the joint. So all those little fibers of stranded wire are now covered in solder. And there's no way that this can ever come apart because we basically bonded it together with metal. So that is going to be a really good, strong mm -hmm. connection. Yep. The only thing that I did wrong is I didn't smush down this little piece and you want to be careful about that because sometimes that can poke through the heat shrink tubing and make a short circuit. So I'm going to crush that down. Hopefully it will not stick out from the heat shrink when we're done. Excellent. So we made a good connection there. All right. I'd like you to solder this one if you could. So I'm going to hold this with the needle nose. Come underneath this with the iron and hold this. Yep, so underneath there. Yep, good. Put a little blob of solder on the iron. Good. All right, now touch the, touch the top of the wire. Oh, there you go. Yes. Good, until it's all solid, then take the iron away. Excellent. That is a good looking joint. So you can wipe it off on here. Kind of just stab it. Yep. Stabby, stabby, Good stabby, stabby stabby. Die. Great job. I, I love how it just like... D dissolves. Yeah, you how know? you just like touch it to there and then it's like... I, I, I touched it to there. Shut. I know. Like, it's super cool. Shut. Like you can make this entire thing disappear. I mean, you that disappeared. Could. You could just turn it into liquid. You could. Yeah. Solder is lead and tin and antimony. The solder that you use for plumbing is not allowed to have lead in it, but for electrical components it does. All right, so can you be the holder of the needle nose for me? The needle nose. It's okay. Let's let the it needle nose. All right, hold that right there. They make a little vise with some alligator clips for holding parts like this when you solder. That would be really helpful. I think I might get that someday. So again, to practice, we add a little bit of solder onto the tip. That's called tinning. Then that makes the heat go into the part better. So we're going to hold it underneath, and then we're going to touch the top until it starts to melt. And then we're going to draw the heat away and don't disturb this for a couple seconds until it has a chance to solidify. Ooh. But that's a good joint. I tell you what, man. All right. Excellent. Let go. Nice job. I got to decide if I want to use heat shrink on this or not. But what I can have you do while I'm looking for that is, you know what? We're going to take, we're going to take a break. I am going to get some fatter heat shrink for those and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, now that we made our connections and we're happy with them, we will shrink the, we tube. will shrink the tubing. So good job. This is barely gonna fit. So what I might do is, I'm 
barely going to fit. You did a good job connecting that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to whittle a little bit of the insulation away to make it tapered. And that way it should slide over a little bit easier. And that is enough. Good. All right. This has a whole bunch of heat settings. The hottest one is really aggressive and you can burn the insulation. So I'm going to put it on the second one. And this is nice because it has a flat surface. So you can use this stationary and just kind of hold the wire over it. So what you want to do, this does get hot. So don't touch this with your hand. You're going to put the heat shrink over this heat source and you're going to rotate it and move it constantly. If you leave it in spot too long, it'll melt and burn. But if you move it around and roll it, it'll get perfect. So hold it on two sides. Okay. Why? Because you know, if it melts and burns, then it's, it's going to burn down the entire house. No, we'll just start oh, over. No big deal. Yeah. There's very few things that cannot be fixed, buddy. And when we break something, when we're trying new things, it's called an apprentice mark. It's part of the fun of learning. So you're going to make mistakes. Do you know what an expert is? Uh, someone that's really, really, really good at something that's practiced for a long time. Expert is someone uh, who made every mistake possible in a narrow field of study. So an expert engineer is just one who's already made all the mistakes there is to make. It's one way of thinking about it. Good job. All right, so then this one, another tricky thing is sometime if your blob of solder is too big, the heat shrink won't go over it, but I think we're okay here. All right, give that a shrink. And this is gonna be really close to the heat source. So we'll just do this. Wait, that's shrunk? Yeah. You sure it's that shrunk? Oh, yeah. that's hot. Can you, um, can you see when you look over this, there's like ripples in the air? Not really. No? It's called mirage. It's because the air is less dense when it's hot. All right, so we heat shrunk that. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we're going to cut some short pieces to go over the heat shrink, over the uh, lugs. So I'll slide one over here, you slide one over there. Okay, so and you want it to be even with the front edge of the lug. So what does that mean? So you want the rubber to be even with the front edge of this metal lug. So it's going to be a little tricky to squeeze down there, but we're going to do it. Like this? A little bit more. Like this? A little bit more. So, like, like this? Like, like that. Perfect. Uh, so you want it even with the front edge there. How's that look? Good? Yeah, good. Professional? All right, you do this one. It has made all the mistakes that it possibly could. There's always an Elaney lurking. Hey, there's a Elaney lurking. How you doing? Hi, lurking Laney. Lurking, 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 lurking. What? What, you surprised that we're not done yet? Where's the Oh, I thought you were surprised that we, that, you were, that we were using your uh, power wheels motor. Not motor, battery. Not battery. Okay, can you feed this okay. barrel connector through that hole and I'll put the nut on the front end? No, I cannot. Looks like there's a little bit of a burr. Let's clean that up. Here, pull it out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, can you put this washer and this nut on, please? Which side goes on? Goes I would say the crown side, so like it should be poking out at you. And then, perfect. It's not the right tool. Do it head on, like this way. I'll hold the connector and you spin that nut. I can tell that it's not the correct tool, but it works. Yeah, I do have a nut driver in the other room, but I don't want to stop the video. All right, one more half turn and that should be good. 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 Half turn. I know, but you're spinning the thing inside and I can't stop it with my fingers. All right. So you're going to make sure that nothing's touching there. All right, can you plug one of these onto each side of the toggle switch, please? Let's 
Sometimes you have to wiggle it to left and right. Good? That's good. All right, another one. So, uh, question, will, mm -hmm. the, uh, will the battery be inside? Yeah, I think we should strap it down to the bottom with some cable ties and then we can just open up the box when we need to recharge it. All right. But for now, we won't strap it down to test it. So this is keyed. See how there's a little notch in there? It will tell you that you're doing it the wrong way. It can only go one way. Now for the power wheels, it matters. The polarity matters for the motor or else when you put it in forward, it would go in reverse and vice versa. But for our rocket igniter, it doesn't matter the polarity. So we're going to do a test with the meter. No, we'll do the fireworks test in a little bit. So set the meter to volts. So uh, here, press one. Um, yeah. And then it says DC. So that's the right kind of current. Mm -hmm. DC means direct current. AC means alternating current. And then apply one alligator terminal to each one of these wires. Alligator terminal. Where are they? Uh, here and here. Oh. Alligator clip. Good job. And I'll hold these separating each other. Flicky, 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 flicking, flicking, flicking. So when the numbers jump around like that, it means that it's an open circuit. It's looking for voltage and oh. you're gonna give it a constant voltage. So that jumping around is gonna stop once we hit the Key. correct voltage. Keys, Is it jumping around still? Cause, oh. Oh, oh. 6.4 volts. That's a good sign. Now to safety test it, to make sure we did everything correct. If any one of these are off, it should kill the power. So that kills the power. Let go of that. That kills the power. Hold it down. And let go of that. Kills the power. Yep, I think. Yep, it kills yep. it. Excellent. So we wired it correctly. We checked it for safety. And now the only thing we have to do is clean up our workstation, wait for it to get dark and uh, test it on some fireworks. <laughs> All right, guys, check back in a couple minutes. We're going to wait until the sun goes down and we're going to do a test of the system and make sure that it really works. <laughs> Say, see you later. Can't wait. Okay. Did, did your head even clear the table, wackadoodle? <laughs> Here, try again. I can't wait. Can't wait. Okay, good. All right, for see you guys fireworks? in a little bit. All right. All right. Alright, I think that's it. Nope. <laughs> I told you! That is the Saturn missile battery. That's what that's called? Yeah. It's the 5th of July. Alright guys, well thank you for being with us for that amazing launch. I'm so glad that it went so well. Uh, we wanted to talk about what we learned during this project and I was gonna ask Jake some questions and see what he thinks. So what was the hardest part about this question, about this project? Mm, I'd say the soldering. The soldering, yeah, have you ever soldered anything before? Uh, I believe before, but still it is pretty hard. A little rusty? Yeah. Yeah. What's tricky about soldering, do you think? Mm, I'd say like uh, having the heat gun, like not touch the wire while you're actually trying to solder it. Oh, the soldering iron? Yeah. Yeah. So I have that same difficulty. I think we should invest in a little vise that has some alligator clips that'll hold the parts for us so that we can free our hands up to make them stabilized. So that's a really good observation. That was tricky. Um, what do you think we should do differently next time? <laughs> we should not make the key so hard to turn. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. During the launch, it was like, a little hard to turn. That's true. It was also hard to turn it was, during practice. Too. It was hard to turn during practice too. So yeah. that's just how the key switch comes. I don't know if that's something we could easily fix. We'd have to disassemble that key switch and somehow put a less strong spring in there. But what do you think would be a good reason for that spring to be so so hard? Why do you mm, think like that's safe? For safety reasons? Yeah, how come? 
like uh, if you let go of it, the spring would just pop right out. And, yeah. well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and you, you don't have to worry about accidentally doing it because you really have to think about pushing the key down and turning it in order to make the connection. So that was good. What I would do differently, oh, well, do we talk about what we do differently? You would make the spring less hard, right? Yeah. I would check my connections before we start to make sure I had the right size heat shrink tubing because there were a couple connections that I wasn't able to heat shrink. But I knew that if I connected heat shrink on the adjacent terminal, that there wouldn't be a chance of a, a short circuit. But really, we should have heat shrink on both of them. So I would do a better job with that. Um, any thoughts on what you think about this project? I think it was fun, especially yeah. seeing the fireworks. Yeah, that was really cool. And there's something awesome about doing it yourself and building it instead of buying it from the store. I like that a lot. And I like working with you, so that was cool. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for joining us on Tinkering with Tiny Humans. If you enjoyed this project, and if you'd like us to do some more that you could do with your family as well, please like and subscribe. And uh, we would love to do more projects for you. If you have any comments, projects you'd like us to try, put it in the comments below and we will do our best to accommodate. And Lainey would like to say goodbye too. Bye. All right, until next time, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.